Hi friends, I'm Nancy Jacobs from Embroidery It at EmbroideryIt.com and today we are going to make these really cute little Easter egg coasters to get you ready for Easter. And so friends, the design is over at EmbroideryIt.com. It's free during the month of March and so if, if you're watching this and it's after it's after March, there's, there's something else fun for you over there. But head over there, embroideryit.com, to grab the design, and uh, you guys can stitch right along with me. We're going to do this in real time, so you're going to get to watch it all stitch out, just just exactly if you're new to applique and in the hoop projects, this is for you. You guys are going to see how quick and easy this really is. So let me tell you the supplies. It's going to take this video is going to run probably about 30 minutes here, and then we'll have a finished project. All right, you need some felt two pieces, five inches square. You need several colors of fabric, and if you just have four inches square, that's fine. I've got some leftovers from a charm pack, but you need some background cotton fabric for the egg, uh, one for the wavy design at the top of the egg, a piece for the flower, and for the leaves. So guys, these are these are little pieces here, so all you need are scraps. This is a great scrap buster. You need some lightweight tearaway stabilizer, and you need some thread. You're going to want thread to match the color of your felt, and you're going to want thread in different colors to match your fabric as well. So I've got my design loaded up here into the machine, and... It's all ready to go. I've got my tearaway stabilizer hooped up in my 4x4 hoop. And the first thing it's going to stitch is the placement line. I'm going to lower the camera so you guys can see this. If you're looking at the thread chart, you will notice that it shows in the thread chart as being red thread. And that's just industry standard. Um, uh, to show, to delineate that that is the placement line, but just use the color of thread to match your felt. So I already have white thread loaded up in the machine, ready to go for the white felt. Now I know I can see exactly where I need to place my felt, because you want to completely cover that stitching line. Oh, one more thing I forgot to tell y'all. You guys need some painter's tape. And if you want some tape here to hold it down, that's fine. I usually find I, with felt, I can hold the felt down uh, for just a few stitches. And then it's really pretty good at staying in place if you just watch it carefully there. The second stitching here is the tack down. This is where it tacks down the felt to your stabilizer. Alright, the next color is we're going to do is for the outline of the egg. So switch your thread color to your egg fabric or whatever is going to match your egg fabric here. And I've got a pretty peach. And once again, this is going to show the placement of where we're going to put our egg fabric. So I'll get that ready because that's next. And once again, just make sure you completely cover all of your stitching. So you won't have a gap there in the fabric. Again, you can tape that down if you like, but I find I just, you know, just be careful, just watch your fingers. And I find that it'll just stay in place well on the felt. Okay, that tacked down our fabric to the felt and stabilizer. Now we want to trim away. I just use these little spring action scissors. We want to trim close to whoop, 
close to our stitching line here. These scissors are getting about worn out. That time to get a new pair. They last for quite a while and you know I don't have a specific brand I use but um, yeah they're kind of losing their sharpness here. There that's kind of better. There. So we've trimmed away. There. I have I don't know three or four pairs of those spring action scissors floating around the room. Um, so you know they're not that expensive so and they're handy little things they're perfect for applique all right the next is the wavy line so depending on what you want to use for the wavy line I'm going to use another peach color so if you want to change your thread color to match for the wavy line go ahead and do so now but I'm going to leave in the thread color that I currently have and once again, this is going to show the placement, where to place the fabric for that little wavy line. And we'll put our fabric so it covers, covers all the line. And this is the tack down. This is where we're tacking down the fabric. Okay. So we're going to take the hoop off of the machine, but do not unhoop. You can see where the wavy line is. And trim close here. Sometimes with these spring action scissors, I have literally broken the metal using these. So I mean, they're just my go-to scissors all the time, and so they get a lot of use in my studio down here. There we go. You can see where we're at. The next bit is going to stitch a decorative satin border around that wavy line. So you can see here, it'll stitch the decorative border around that. That's going to take just a minute to stitch. I have got one crazy thread that didn't get pulled down to the back side. I'm going to trim that off because I want to get rid of it. For a little Easter tree. I'll show you how to do that. If you're wanting to do a little Easter tree, you're going to want about 11 inches of ribbon for a loop, and then you're going to want also some ribbon to make a little bow to glue on. It's just glued on to the front there. And you can hang it. You could put the ribbon so it hangs, so it hangs this way as well. It's wherever you choose. I will show you how to do that when the time comes here. If you remember, we did something similar when we did the Christmas coaster. We made it as an ornament here. And friends, if you've been stitching with me, we've got quite a little collection going now. And here's our four-leaf clover coaster. our heart coaster that we personalized. Here's the heart coaster that we didn't personalize. And the maple leaf. Here's our chicken. Our apple. 
fall and next month we will be doing a flower which will be really sweet to, for spring so friends you can do several of these like the four leaf clover here let me show you you know if you do if you do three or four of these or group them together I think four is a nice number tie it with a pretty ribbon and bow and this makes a nice gift to give um, you know, housewarming a teacher appreciation uh, welcoming a new neighbor to the neighborhood so you can make them all the same or you can make them different too and you could just you could give them a collection but I, friends I'm thinking get your Christmas gifts made now uh, this this is the time this is gonna make some great stocking stuffers for Christmas okay so it finished that wavy line and the next bit I'm gonna just show you here real quick so y'all can see there I think I showed you that upside down I'm sorry <laughs> and here's we're going to change the thread to now we're going to do the leaves so we want our green thread or whatever thread you have to match your leaves and once again it's going to show the placement of your leaf fabric so we'll let that begin stitching I've got my leaf fabric ready to place down, so. Okay, I've got my leaf fabric, so it covers that stitching line. My machine does not clip jump stitches. This is a Brother a 1250D and uh, so it's just, this is just one above the basic model. The largest hoop size on this is a 5x7. So it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles and one of the things it does not do is it does not clip jump stitches so I have to trim those myself whereas I'll bet many of you have bigger machines that do that wonderful feature for you That's something to look into if you're looking at a new machine look and see does it trim jump stitches there take a look so I trimmed it I've Look here, friends. I've kept the kept the design in the hoop the entire time. I'm not taking it out yet because we're not finished. All right, we're going to put it back in, and it's also going to do the decorative border, the decorative satin border around the leaves. So. While it's doing that, oh, let me to raise this up because that way. You guys can at least see me, and even though I can't see you, I can at least feel like I'm talking to you a little bit more. But um, when you make these friends, post them on Facebook and on Instagram, and use the hashtag embroidery it so along. Use it all one word, embroidery it so along, and that helps all of us find one another so that we can see the, the wonderful things that you're making, and we can share with one another. So if you would do that, that would be great. Um, speaking of that, you guys can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. And you can also find me on Pinterest. On Pinterest, I show all kinds of uh, things that I'm interested in. A lot of recipes, a lot of, a lot of country living. Um, for those of you that have not met me before, I live outside of Grand Rapids, Michigan, out in the country. And um, I just enjoy all extra cooking and crafting and homemaking, just any, any kind of do-it-yourself type thing. I, I enjoy that. Alright, this is just finishing up the second leaf, so I'm going to lower the camera. And you guys can watch the last step of stitch out here. And 
the next color we're going to use is for our flower. So choose, choose your fabric and your thread color for the flower. There we go. Take out the green thread here. And I have one little jump stitch to trim where it moved from the, the green leaf to the other green leaf. There we go. So we'll get that out of the way. And put our next thread color in. And as I've said before, now this, this once again is the placement. This is going to show us where to put our fabric for our flower. Cover that up. Because it's snowing outside. Here it is, March the 12th, and it is snowing out there. That was the tack down. And once again, we will take it off, take the hoop off the machine, but do not unhoop the design. And we're going to trim around our little flower fabric here. I hear the dogs outside barking. I thought maybe they were barking at the snow. It was snowing earlier today, but it had stopped for a little bit. I hope wherever y'all are that the weather's warmer there so you can see the flower. We're going to put it back on the machine. It'll stitch the decorative stitching around the flower. And I got one thread. Didn't go down again. Let's trim that off so it doesn't get in our way. You'll notice that it will stitch around that flower, around the different elements of the design with a light weight zigzag stitch before it starts doing the satin stitching. And that is called underlayment. That's, that's the underlay. And what that does is that helps to keep your design flat. It helps to prevent any puckering. It helps to keep your stitches raised up nicely. Um, the underlayment is a really important feature that, that is done before most of the other stitching just to give you a more beautiful finished product. And then it does that satin stitching over the lightweight stitching and so it hides that lightweight stitching. on a child's dress. You could do, do several around the hem of a dress. You could put it on a baby bib. Um, you could put it on a hot pad, on towels. Like on a towel, you could line up like three of them along the edge of a towel and that would look adorable for Easter. Okay, so we've got that. You guys can see that we've, we've stitched around the flower. The next bit we're going to stitch our decorative stitching around the egg itself. So we're going to switch back to our egg colored 
thread, which is the peach thread for me, that you can make Easter eggs in all different colors. Once again, you'll see it. First it goes round, but then it'll stitch that real lightweight zigzag, that underlayment. All right, I'm gonna raise the camera so we can see each other again just a little bit. So anyway, you guys, stop over at embroideryit.com. There's always fun things going on. I do an alphabet. Um, we go through A to Z and you get a new free letter each week. It's free for one week and then after that it goes for sale. So with these coasters I leave free for a month and then after that they go for sale on the website. Um, but there's always fun things there. Uh, there's um, a blog so if you're wanting to learn some more about machine embroidery if you want to see some of the things that I've been stitching you can go over and read the blog I'd love to hear what's on your embroidery machine and what you're stitching right now I'm guessing that many of you are getting ready for Easter um, these would be really pretty on napkins and you could um, you know have one on, on each napkin you could also um, maybe personalize it a little bit if you wanted you could put an initial in the center of the flowers make it more personal for each person it would be a fun thing to do but let me know if you if you're new to in the hoop if you're new to applique uh, i hope you're going to find that these videos done in just a matter of, of minutes here. It's just doing that last little bit around the outside of the egg and then all we have to do is put the back on. So we'll put the back on to cover up our stitching. You can see here then the only thing that shows on the back side is just that border stitching around the edge and that's it. project in the end. I'll lower the camera, let you guys watch it finish stitching out. We're just about done. You guys are going to have your coaster all done, finished, ready to, to keep for yourself or to give to someone. While it's finishing that last little bit there, um, you might want to have some painting shears handy. We'll also get our painter's tape ready to go. If you want a hanger, Now's your time. Cut your 11 inches of ribbon. So you let me send me an email reply to any of my newsletters. So yeah, while you're over at embroideryit.com, be sure to sign up for the newsletter, and that way you'll get informed as new designs are released each week. Um, but 
haven't hit reply to the newsletter, let me know what you enjoy stitching. Let me know if, if how you like applique or in the hoop, or if you like if you like other things better. I'd love to hear. Let me know. Don't unhoop the design, just take the hoop off of your machine. Let me show you what it looks like here. It's from the front, and I can see from the back, and I can see I have some gray thread in there, which was, I just forgot to change my bobbin thread. I should have white thread, but <laughs> you guys are getting to see some gray thread. Okay, well, you know, this is real life, and that's what happens. I just forgot to change the bobbin thread. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to change it real quick before I do the, um, before I stitch the, the border. I was doing, this machine does both embroidery and regular sewing. And I had been doing some regular sewing and I've been using gray thread and just forgot to switch that, but that's okay. All right, we're gonna put the back over and we're gonna get our painter's tape. And we don't need much. Need four little pieces here just to hold the corners. And friends, if you want to put your hanger on, here, here's what it looks like now. But if you want to put your hanger on, now's the time to do it. Just just pull that back. You tuck the ends right in here with the loop on the outside and tape tape your ribbon in place and then tape the back on top so that the ribbon would be sandwiched in between those two layers of felt. And then you can use whatever color you would like for the border of your coaster. And I'm going to use the same pink or peach color that I used for the egg itself. And now it's going to do a little decorative zigzag stitch around the coaster. Take it just a minute here. graduation gifts, things like that. Um, so just let me know what's on your embroidery machine or what you're sewing. Maybe you're not embroidering right now. Let me know what you're sewing because I like to hear that too. 
what I was sewing before where I had the gray thread on, um, I was doing a, just an, a regular applique project. It wasn't machine embroidery, it was just a regular applique. And um, I wanted the top thread, I wanted the bobbin thread to match my top thread and I was using gray at the time. So that's what happens. Last corner, the last corner, guys. Stitching is almost done. And the machine beeped, it is done, it's finished. We take our hoop out of our machine and we can now take it out of the hoop itself. And what we're going to do is get our pinking shears and you can use straight scissors. Actually, let's tear away the stabilizer first. Uh, if, if you don't have pinking shears, don't worry, just use a straight edge straight scissors and uh, trim around. Okay. And I like to trim about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less from the edge. Try to be kind of careful to match the the teeth of the pinking shears up with the previous cut. So it just makes it look a little, a little nicer that way. There we go. Guys, you have a gift ready to give. We're done. We're done. Applique and in the hoop. It was that easy and that quick. So thank you guys for joining me. Like I said, head over to embroideryit.com, sign up for the newsletter, and I'll see you next month, and we'll be making our next little coaster. Take care. Bye, y'all.